Welcome to today's edition of Bar Talk ATL. I'm your host, Marcella Phillips, aka Lady M, and I am live on set of Johnny, I Want My Liver Back. <laughs> and today I'll be interviewing some of the characters, some of the actors in this movie, and we're going to get a little bit um, the background of this movie. So I heard that there was a little horror story behind this, a little spooky here. So, and I like horror movies. So today I'm going to introduce my first guest of the night, Chandria Carmichael and Mr. Tony Sims, the producers, directors, characters, everything. Yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So tell who wants to start first. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your roles in this movie and a little bit about the movie itself. Okay, my name is Chandra Carmichael and I am the creator, writer, and producer of Johnny I Want My Liver Back. I'm Tony Sims. I am the producer, one of the writers. And I was the extra in it. Oh, so you, so you do all, yeah, you're a triple fun. threat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about your production company, Shandrea. Is okay. it Horror House? Yes, Films? Horror House Films. I am revamping my um, production company. Um, originally, my production company was Burlesque Relate Productions. I mm -hmm. still use that. But since I'm revamping myself as a horror filmmaker, I decided to go with Horror House Films. Um, I started that this year, um, okay. the company, Horror House Films. So what made you get into like horror movies? I know that's, that's your thing. <laughs> um, okay, I love horror films. I have been a fan of horror films since I was a young child. I don't know why I like them so much, but mm -hmm. I did. And my my, my favorite horror film is A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh. Like, it's my that's my favorite one. one. <laughs> I know. Candyman. Um, I like A Nightmare on Elm Street. Second would be like the Friday the 13th franchise. Uh -huh. And third, maybe Halloween. Okay. But I'm a um, Stephen King fan. I have read um, a couple of his books. Wow. And I don't, I don't know why, why I like horror, but that, that's not my only genre I like. I also like rom-coms. I okay. like those. I'm a drama person. I like to see dramas. But yeah. as a writer and producer and creator, I create horror. That exciting, that thriller, chiller right. stuff. I love that. Yeah. So I, I think that's good because we don't have enough of good horror movies, I don't think. Now we got the old school, you know, like yeah. you said, Friday 13th, Candyman, and all those Jasons and all mm -hmm. that stuff. We need, we need new content. Yes, so thank do. you for jumping into that field of filming. And so we have your your partner in crime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all been hanging out for y'all been sticking together for a long time. Yeah, he was on our um on, on my first project, the games that children play. That was in what, two thousand and it was like two thousand twelve we started mm -hmm. and we yeah. finished in like twenty fourteen, right. kind of twenty fifteen, then we went straight into Clairvoyance, the Ellis Files. That's a right. sci-fi, you know, uh, crime genre. That mm -hmm. one. So, what got you started, Mister um, Sims? Um, <clears throat> I've been uh, been doing this like for some years now, but like my genre, I like like Disney type stuff. Okay. But once I got like working with Sandrea, I was like, oh, this horror stuff, I like it, I like it a lot. So I wanted it like to do this too. Okay. So I've been doing this for some years now. Okay, so let's get back. Let's get to the movie, mm -hmm. Johnny. I want my Whatever. liver back. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Because I, I, I'm thinking like it's a kid movie. I'm thinking a kid. Hold on, wait, mm -hmm. Mama. We are family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody else out there too. Okay. You can keep that in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's get to the movie, the title of the movie, Johnny, I Want My Liver Back. What is that about? Because when I think about it, I'm like, I see this little kid named Johnny chasing somebody for some liver or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Tell, and how does it fit into a horror movie? <laughs> okay, so... 
Johnny, I want my liver back. Well, my version of Johnny, I want my liver back is an adaptation of a story that was told to me by my uncle Russell when we were kids. He would tell us this story when the lights go out. Oh. Um, but each time the story would be different. And I decided to do my own version of Johnny, I want my liver back. Um, because I wanted to see how my version of the story um, play out. And I it took us like four years to actually um, develop to actually develop the whole um, horror. Okay, Jenna, want, want, uh, Jenna, I want my liver back is a story that's going to be in the story of Jane and John Doe, which is an anthology horror film with like four different stories in there. Okay. He's writing a story for the film. Okay. I'm writing two, which is Johnny, I Want My Liver Back and The Curfew. So, um, okay. we're getting back to Johnny, I Want My Liver Back. It is about a boy, a teenage boy named Johnny, who has a gambling problem. But we don't know that he has a gambling problem until further into the story. But the beginning part of the story is being told by Uncle Stevie, which is based on my Uncle Russell um, character. He's passed away now. No. He passed in 2016, mm-hmm. right when I was about to, you know, start right. to So this is like write. a dedication? Yes, a dedication okay. to him. Because awesome. um, I told him, I said, the next film we're going to do is John I Won't Live Back because he wasn't able to make the yeah. games that children play. Right. Um premiere. So we would say that he inspired you. Yeah, he inspired me to continue <laughs> the story. Okay. So he inspired me to continue the story. So, um, but that's what Johnny Want My Liver Back is about. Okay. And I forgot where I left off, what I was talking about. You was talking about your <laughs> uncle inspiring. Oh, yeah, inspiring the um, story. Here. So um, his version of the story was about a little boy named Johnny. His mom told him to go to the store, buy some liver, make sure you don't run into one, any of your friends, make sure you do what you're supposed to do. And little Johnny, he doesn't do that. They buy candy. Mm. They spend all the money. Uh-oh. And Johnny's friend leaves him, and they walk by the graveyard. And Johnny is like, "Okay, I'm a." He doesn't tell his friend what he's about to do, so his friend goes home. Mm-hmm. He sees I don't know the term for it, but is it a? a it's not a grave digger, is it? It's someone mm-hmm. that yeah. a grave digger. I guess that's I guess that's what you got would them. say. Uh-huh. And put the. He was going. He got the person that passed away. Liver took it home. Mama cooks the liver. And it just, you know, goes from there. Just downhill from there. Uh-huh. And one version of the story, Johnny wakes up dead. His mom finds him with his liver missing. Yeah. And another version, another version is Johnny's mom is dead because she ate the liver and her liver is missing. Mm. So, but my version is different. It. Yeah, I, yeah, the mom. We don't even see the mom in this. We just only hear her voice. Oh, wow. So, I like that. So, you just turned this whole story of your what your uncle mm-hmm. told you as a child into a movie. Right. And now, he, is this the first movie? Oh, I mean, you, we know that we've mm-hmm. heard the story, but it's the first time anyone has actually done the movie. This is like, from what I saw online, mm-hmm. it was a guy that was in Africa. Mm-hmm. He did a version of it, but um, it was called Giving Back My Liver, but I knew when I saw mm-hmm. it what it was, the title, I, I knew what it was about. Right. And it's the same thing, the same scenario, but this time it's two adult males, and the person that kills his friend, kills his friend and takes his liver, is married. And they are on tough times, and instead of him going to buy liver, he... It was something they was drinking, like some kind of mm-hmm. alcohol beverage. They mix it with milk. Okay. And um, they drinking, drinking, and carrying on. And then he realized he made a mistake. Mm-hmm. And then we see, we like, okay, what happened? Fast forward, 
the wife and his daughter's eating the liver, the man is having a panic attack because he's like, he didn't, he's not eating the liver. And all of a sudden, he sees his friend, but no one else sees the friend. And the friend is eating liver, is eating his own liver at the table. Uh -huh. And no one wow. sees anything. And then it just gets crazy. It's so this so, movie, this story is like international. And I'm, yeah. and I'm surprised the I haven't on heard those, of it. <laughs> the ones on those will seem, they, um, it was funny. It wasn't scary. Oh, okay. It's now, comical. now the guy one that African guy did. Now that was that was haunting. That okay. was scary. Okay. But the one that the other kids did, it wasn't scary. Okay. It was like I'm not gonna say amateur, but it wasn't that scary. Right. So this one is going to be thriller, chiller. Mm -hmm. Thriller, um, chiller has a background story. Everyone has a background story. Mm -hmm. right. Even um, um, Uncle Stevie has a background story. You know, with his niece and nephew. Okay. Um, now, are you starring in this movie as well? No, I um no, I came on set too late <laughs> to try to <laughs> to try to um um have a role in it. Okay. Not in this, probably in the one of the other films, but not in Johnny Won't Live a Bad. Okay. What about you, Tony? Are you? Uh, yeah, I was the um, detective. Okay. Okay. So it's gonna be like that. We. You're investigating what happened to... I'm trying not to give it all away, though. We're going to have to wait to see the film. Man. Okay, we're going to yeah, wait. Yeah. <laughs> That's, your your role sounds very uh, deep. What got you into acting, Tony? Um, I've been um, acting for some years now. I like, I like my passion to acting. I, I love acting. I like to bring stuff to life. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've done a lot, a lot of stuff when I was younger. I don't know if you heard of the, um, the show, the Canadian show, The Grassy. I've done that when, when I was there in Canada. Um, okay. And other than that, when I came here, I got done with like some little extra work here. Mm -hmm. When I came here, like I've done a lot of the stuff like with um, Walking Dead, Teen Wolf, um, Drop Dead D when it comes on Lifetime. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I've been doing it, but uh, I like doing I like producing and writing stuff too. Right. So. So, have you um, starred in any of the major movies? Or what what major movies have you been, like, starred in? Or are you working? I'm working on my... my uh, <laughs> are you, act, are you taking any acting own, classes? Um, no, I'm okay. just working on my, my own stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good deal. Um, so, what do we expect to from you in the future you said you like to write um, um i've done I, I want to do more in like disney stuff okay like like right i've written a disney series okay. that I've, I've been working on that um that i want to like actually film when i finish the rest of it okay and um so have you worked with any of tyler perry's movies or shows series or anything like uh -huh. that any one of no. them no. i have not no so yeah is that a goal <laughs> mm. yeah it is um well, if he like does the horror genre a little bit differently <laughs> no to. but i can't like this is the thing i cannot i cannot write the another um what is that genre i believe i can mm -hmm. but if someone has to give me the outline so i can do that I can't come up with off the top of my head. If someone gave me an outline mm -hmm. and we talked about something. Yeah, we did. So yeah. Yeah, if you can give me an outline, <laughs> I can I can develop a script, I can de develop characters, I can write like that, but I have to have an outline and I can write for someone else. Yeah, because yeah, me and her we work together like yeah. on stuff. Like when we come up with ideas, we like we get on the phone, we talk Feed about up with it. each other, yeah. yeah. And then Who does most of the writing? She does. I do. You do. Okay. But then my background is um stage plays. Um, okay. But they were always like maybe comical parodies, mm -hmm. you know, like SNL. Yeah. Because I, I also act too, but okay. um, I haven't done it since college. You okay. know, I, I like the theater, the musical theater. That's my first love. I love music. I love to sing. Like that. That's my first love. Right. Well, maybe you should pitch something to Tyler Perry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would love. Well, I did work on um, on set of Tyler Perry of uh, the. Oval, mm -hmm. I think it was oval, 
Mm-hmm. We were in the makeshift plane uh, airport, mm-hmm. but I heard he's building a new, like a real mm. airport. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, yeah. It's and like, I saw you in respect in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I saw you in that. I made my way up there. Yeah, you. <laughs> but you know what I said I, I was gonna back away from doing background mm-hmm. because I heard that it was difficult trying to get a role that's why I, I was mm-hmm. leading to that question it's hard to get a leading role in a movie when With you've done a stuff. lot of background stuff mm-hmm. and I was told you're not supposed to mention that stuff mm-hmm. like that but you don't put background on your resume mm-hmm. right but it's fun like some of the the sets are fun I had a good time um, on respect I got to meet Jennifer Hudson and Marlon yes. So it was pretty cool, but um, I like to, you know what, I think in the future, I may want to start with the producing, producing movies, being being behind the scenes, Mm because I see a lot of things that I'd be like, no, you're not supposed to do that. (laughs) Y'all got the cell phones out, you're not supposed to have cell phones on set. I'm I'm the snitch on set, (laughs) I'll be telling I'm like, put that up. They wasn't doing that in the 90s. You're supposed to have the flip phone. <laughs> you ain't supposed to have no iPhone. <laughs> so, but I have an eye for stuff like that. But that particular day, I said, I have friends on set, and they I just disappeared from them. I said, if I'm going to be on set all day, I'm going to make sure I get seen. Right. So that was my goal. And it worked. <laughs> But yeah, so I am honored to be here live on set with you all. And thank you for having me. You're welcome. And I wish you all good luck and success on everything that you do. I see you guys working hard out there. And I'm glad I'm still part of your family. Don't forget about me when y'all you know, make it to the big screen. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining Bar Talk ATL. And it's a wrap.